Um, I mean, I'd like to say that I don't think there is a right or wrong way to do an audiovisual essay, but I can imagine that there would be some audiovisual essays that I don't think are audiovisual essays. Mm. Uh, we, this does happen at Audiovisual C. We get a lot of people trying to add videos to the group. They propose videos. And we don't add everything. Um, and it, I suppose videos where the critical purpose is is unimaginable mm. or difficult to see um, may may not be, for me, therefore may, may not help it um, mm -hmm. achieve entry into the category of video essays or audiovisual essays. So I think something that is completely uncritical or that doesn't look like it was thought at all, maybe just a collection of clips or something, mm -hmm. you know. So I think there are, you know, there are things that I see as video essays and things I don't see as video essays, definitely. Um, and then in terms of, yeah, I don't know, in terms of but, but beyond that, I think it's very important to keep things open because at the moment we have a certain range of audiovisual essays uh, which is you know which are dependent on the kinds of technical tools producing them and and so on but but you know that's changing very quickly and what we'll soon be able to do um, you know I think we can't really imagine what we'll be able to do so two developments this week um, one is a video essay that Kevin Lee just showed at the Rotterdam Film Festival mm -hmm. which is what he's calling the, fir the world's first interactive video essay and it's a really compelling experiment uh, with split screens and text going on and making you look at different places on the video screen so, so for him you know he, he's been experimenting with these kind of desktop documentary approaches mm -hmm. for a while and he's beginning to take it even further so I think you know that's some way we can't predict how we might use that um, another uh, another piece uh, would be a video that I've just seen by Kevin Ferguson which is not public yet but one of the things I would share about that video is one of the criticisms so that sometimes happens of video essays in an academic context is certain reviewers or scholars get frustrated by the way that video essays don't always tell you where the what film the clip is coming from what you know yes. so you see a sequence yeah. in a supercut and it doesn't say and you have to go to the credits you know the credits at the end where maybe yeah. the films are all listed in order and yeah um, and so this so Kevin Ferguson was using the closed captioning um, uh, tool in Vimeo and um, YouTube you, you could switch it on, uh -huh. and if you switched on closed captioning, it would tell you which film the clip uh -huh. was coming from. So that Very was, useful. I thought that was amazing. You know, that mm -hmm. was, I thought that was brilliant because that would be a way of getting around this criticism that they're just always poetic and they never really tell you in mm -hmm. a scholarly way where things are from. So I thought that was great because it could even give you time codes and things. You could do all sorts of. Uh, so I think those the ways in which video videos might become more interactive online, and the way that multiple screens will work, the way that text can be added and you can click on a screen and make the text appear or click on the screen and make video appear. I think those are things that will uh, change the way, the ways that we see what video essays are. And maybe in a way they'll make the distinction between the audiovisual and, and writing even less important that because things will be able to flow and be superimposed yes. in much more interesting ways. So I think that's that, that's what I'm really excited by is where mm. things will go. Whether people like me with our limited skills will be able to take advantage of those new forms as producers or whether we'll just be fascinated spectators, I don't think I could predict that. But I'm certainly looking forward to seeing what happens.